So you feel like it's time to help other people and help them move from where they're at to the next location in their life? Well, that means you wanna be a life coach. Hey, and here's what you do to become a great life coach. You feel it, don't you? That deep down desire to help somebody else make progress? Well, that makes you a life coach, right? Or maybe even a mentor. But either way, you're wanting to get people from point A to point B. See, that takes a lot of skill. It takes a really good mindset and a deep, deep down desire to really want to help people. You know, for you to become a life coach, you know, what are the steps? What would it take so that you could be effective and be a great influence on other people? Well, number one, it's gonna take some training. Now, could you go out there and just do it by yourself and be a life coach? Sure, you could get a certain distance, but there's some great training that's available to you to really learn how to do this in a systematic way so you don't miss any of the important steps of what it takes to help another person. So training's number one. And here's a suggestion. Go to my course called Art of Mentoring. It's a three-day course right here in Salt Lake City, Utah. A fantastic event, which completely gives you a ton of training of how to be a great life coach. You will love it. You will absolutely love it. But while we're talking, let me give you some insight of how to get you on the right path here and get you started so that you can at least open up your mouth and stop holding back in supporting people from getting from point A to point B. Now, what is point A? Point A is where a person is at. You know, where are they currently at? What are they currently doing? And they're wanting to get to a new place, something to be different, a different result, a different way of living. Maybe they wanna just upgrade their lifestyle. They wanna to get to this point B. So there's point A, point B, C, D, E, F, G, right? It's like, we wanna just keep moving, right? To be able to have progress. So when I talk about point A to point B, it's they're gonna change something. They're gonna change, not just keep reliving and rehashing the point A lifestyle. They really want something to be different, like they've made progress to point B. You see, because a lot of people sit there and spin their wheels in point A, think they're getting ahead, but they keep saying to themselves, oh, I did all this work and I'm right back where I'm at. That's not what coaching is all about. Coaching is about making a change so that you literally are existing and living in a new place in your life, a point B. We're creatures of habit. We really are. People, we, as our psychological part of who we are keeps replaying every day, it holds us in the place where we're at over and over and over again. But some of us just really want to get over to a point B and have a new lifestyle. Things be really different. And that requires some coaching. So first off, being a, a life coach, something to consider is, can you help a person identify clearly where they're at today? And to be a great life coach, you are able to help a person define and describe their point B. Where is it that they want to get to? What is it that they want to do? What is it the new results that they want to have in their life? To be a great life coach, help a person decipher, describe, and define what they currently have in their life and where is it that they want to be. Now that's the beginning of coaching is to be able to clarify those two different points. Because when this is fuzzy or vague, and this is fuzzy or vague, well then you can't track progress. You can't tell if something's different. And that's a, a really big failure of new people who are trying to be a life coach is they don't make these clear distinctions between the two. Because the experience of moving from point A to point B, it takes some work. And to be able to know the definitions clearly of point A and point B, it can help you identify when things begin to change. So starting out as a life coach, describe point A, describe point B. Second part is 
is what does a person do when they meet self-sabotage? Well, it's gonna happen. Self-sabotage, I think some people misinterpret what self-sabotage is. They think it's the mind like doing things to you. Self-sabotage is very clear, very clear on what it's doing. Self-sabotage is the mind holding its course while you're trying to change directions. That's all self-sabotage is, is your mind's holding course of what it's always done, what it's always going to do, but you're trying to alter that direction and it's just pulling you back because it's so ingrained in you, it pulls you back. And that pulling back experience is what self-sabotage is. It means that you're gonna forget some things, you're going to do some things, you're going to have things fall apart along the way because your mind is just doing things to be able to pull you back to the same course that you were on. So self-sabotage, that's something you're gonna to need to be aware of is what to do when there is self-sabotage. How do you coach that person through it? How do you get them back on track? Because between point A and point B, a person will go through a good 50 to 100 self-sabotage moments. And wow, that's tough. No wonder people struggle reaching their goal. No wonder people give up on going towards their goal. And I'll tell you this, as a, as a coach, you're not gonna do very well if you don't know how to manage this self-sabotage in another person because they'll quit, they'll stop. But believe me, I've coached and mentored thousands and thousands and thousands of people and I've watched the self-sabotage just eat a person up because they keep failing or some things keep don't working out. That's because, like I said before, we're very, very, very strongly on a particular path and here we are trying to turn directions, right? And trying to go towards point B instead of being stuck in point A. Here's some tips though. And just some tips about self-sabotage. Self-sabotage will sneak up on your client and grab a hold of them and it will just take them off course unless you have them track and report daily activities. If you have them track and report daily activities, you can see sooner when the sabotage starts. Most people don't catch sabotage until it's already on the way back to the original way of thinking, the original behavior. But new coaches don't even notice it until the person's starting to fail. But a great life coach sees self-sabotage right when it starts, right when it begins, right when, it, when the mind, when, the, when you try to get a person to go a new direction and help them go their new direction to their goal, and, the, and as soon as the, even the turning starts to go back, you're able to see it for what it is because they track and report. If you're not tracking activities or having them report to you on a daily or weekly basis, there's no way you're gonna see when self-sabotage is happening. You're not gonna see it. And then the person fails, they, their ideas fall apart, they get pulled back to their original way of thinking, and then you're gonna feel like you're a terrible coach and you don't know what to do different. The biggest, most common mistake a life coach makes is they go easy on the person when it comes to tracking and reporting. They think, oh, I don't wanna bother you. I don't wanna you know, burden your life. Oh, but you want to completely change your behavior and completely change your results? I don't want to bother you and make you track and report. Doesn't that just sound ridiculous? If you're going to change a behavior, change a lifestyle from how it's been for years and years and years and years, and you think it's just going to move to a whole new location by itself? Are you kidding? The subconscious mind is so in a rut. And it's so driven because the sub subconscious mind is so obedient. It has its rules, its regulations, its ways, and now you're gonna change it? If you don't have tracking and reporting on your client and they don't track and report anything, you are not gonna see self-sabotage when it starts. It's a lot easier to correct something right when it starts 
instead of later because it later it builds up momentum and then that person completely fails it doesn't work and then they wonder if they'll ever make it so tracking and reporting and i know you're probably gonna have a million questions about well how do you track and how do you report that's why you go to art of mentoring so i can take you on a three-day journey of what it means to really be a great coach really be a great mentor and so but be aware you want to do your studying on the self-sabotage challenge. So number one, getting clear on the goal, describe it, how they see it, all the details, and how they're self-sabotage is the next one. And the third one, as a coach, I think it'd be really smart, if you wanna be a great coach, that you have some empowerment skills. What does that mean, to have empowerment skills? What that means is that you literally can help the person supercharge their mind. Because their mind is only at a particular level of ability. And if you don't help them supercharge their mind to be at a new level, well, they're gonna try to live a new lifestyle with their current thinking. How are you supposed to live a new lifestyle with current thinking? There's a gap. And when there's a gap, what happens is, as they try to live this new lifestyle, they fall. And sure, they could get their goal, but can they sustain the goal? Sure, they can reach a new level of an income, but can they sustain it? You know, yeah, they let go of 30 pounds, but can they sustain it? Your state of mind is your state of life. And if your state of mind is right here, and you're trying to live a lifestyle here and you don't change your state of mind, then your mind will pull your results back down to where it exists. But empowerment skills, and here's the insight of what I mean by empowerment skills. They must upgrade their ability to visualize, not what they visualize, but how they use visualization skills. They must upgrade their language skills not just what they say, but how they say it. Then there also must be some upgrade of how to manage emotions. So there's the way you visualize, there's the way that you talk, and the way that you manage your emotions. Those are the three superpowers every human being has. Their ability to visualize, their ability to verbalize, and then their ability to manage emotions. And if you're not coaching them on how to upgrade and literally move those skills up, it's gonna to be tough. Because here you're working with a person that's not advancing, but they wanna have a goal that's bigger than where they're at. Ah, you can already see the writing on the wall. It's not gonna work. So to be a great life coach, visualization skills, language management skills, and emotional management skills. It's a game changer, total game changer. But that's the direction you wanna to go to be a great life coach. You don't have to, but then you'll just end up being like everybody else. Great training. You know this is what you wanna do, don't you? Well, hey, I would love to train you at the next level of how to be a fantastic life coach. Uh, click the link below and register to attend Art of Mentoring course here in Salt Lake City, Utah. You will absolutely love it. Let's take your skills to the next level. And also, subscribe. Don't miss any of the trainings I have coming out to you. I have you on my mind as I create these trainings. So subscribe.